Hi guys, so the next lesson we're going to do here is find the intersection between two planes. So how do they meet? Well, look, here's a nice picture, two planes. They meet at a straight line. So this, this uh, black line is a straight line that goes through where these two vectors meet. A nice simple way to think of it is a book. Imagine you have a book and you pull out and you open it up and you kind of open up two pages. Well, the two pages come down and they meet together at the kind of whatever the name of that part of the book is in the middle of the book and it's like a straight line. So we're trying to find when we when it says find the vector equation of the line of intersection of the planes with equations this and this. We've got two planes and we're trying to find the equation of this line where they intersect. That's it. Can two planes not intersect? Well, yes, they can if they are parallel. And a nice easy way to see if, if they are parallel is to look at their normals. And if their normals are parallel, then the vectors are parallel. These two vectors, or these two normals are not parallel because you can quickly see it. This guy's is three, one, negative one, and this guy's one, negative two, four. So they're definitely not uh, multiples of each other and therefore not parallel. Okay, I'm gonna show you two ways to do this. The first way is the easy way with a calculator. So we can solve, we have two equations. So this is, a, it's like a system of linear equations. So I'm gonna to go to algebra, solve system of linear equations. I have two equations, but I have three unknowns. So you may ask, well, how on earth are we gonna do this? I thought we needed three equations to solve three unknowns. Well, yes, but we are going to, we're not gonna find a point, we're gonna find a line. So let me just show you what the calculator gives us. So x minus 2y plus 4z equals negative 5. Enter. Okay, what on earth is this? Well, this is actually, it's given this c2 in bold. Usually it's c1. I guess they've used c1 already for some reason. So this c2 is their parameter. So remember, we have the parametric form of the, of the vector equation of a line. This is the parametric form. Um, it is essentially, so a seventh, one seventh minus, one seventh minus two sevenths t. So x is equal to one seventh minus two sevenths t. I certainly prefer t to c2. So use t or lambda. This guy's, they've swapped it around only because it's positive and minus, but, um, this is 18 over 7 plus 13 over 7 t. So y is equal to 18 over 7 plus 13 over 7 t. And then z is just equal to t. So that's, you'll see why z is just equal to t in a second. We actually choose it, let it equal to t, because to we, we need to bring in a parameter because we can't find a solution. Um, we can't find a single solution because we have three unknowns and two equations. Okay, so that's the easy way to do it with a calculator. Without a calculator, what do we do? Well, we basically need to start trying to eliminate variables. So let's try and eliminate variables. The nicest thing I can see to do is let's multiply this one by two, leave this one, and then our y's will cancel nicely. So I'm going to multiply this one by two, giving me 6x plus 2y minus 2z equals 6. And then this one, x minus 2y plus 4z equals negative 5. Then I'm going to eliminate the y's. So I'm going to add the two equations. So this becomes 7x, add this, plus 2z, add this, equals 1. So I have 7x plus 2z equal 1. Now I'm going to write x in terms of z. So I'm going to say 7x is equal to 1 minus 2z. And then x is actually equal to 1 over 7 minus 2 over 7 z. Okay, at this stage, I'm going to say let, um, and now remember, this guy's is, it t is nothing to do with this one, because 
I've done this with my calculator. I'm now assuming I don't have a calculator. So I'm going to say let z equal t. We have to bring in this parameter at this point because we're not going to be able to solve it. We have to let z, it's, it's a bit like saying, okay, let z equal anything. So z is just something, and we'll get x and y in terms of whatever that something is. That's what a parametric equation is. So I'm going to say let z equal t. So x is now equal to a seventh minus two sevenths t. And that's, look, I actually have it already. That's x a seventh minus two seventh t, and z is equal to t. All I need now is to get, all I need to find is y. So let's choose this equation, I think. I'm just gonna put a line down here so there's no confusion. Um, okay, so I can now say, I'm gonna, let's say sub into equation one. So I can say three x, which is three times this, one seventh, minus two sevenths t plus y plus y minus z which is t minus t is equal to three and now i just need to find y in terms of t so this is three sevenths minus six sevenths t plus y uh, minus t equals three and then finally, let's just put y over here. y is equal to, I have 3 minus 3 sevenths. So that's 21 sevenths minus 3 sevenths is 18 sevenths. And then I have, so on the left-hand side, I have negative 6 sevenths t plus 7 sevenths t, which is 13 sevenths t, or negative, negative 13 sevenths t. And then add it to the or to both sides, giving me plus 13 sevenths t. And I'm left with, well, I have my x, I have my y, I have my z. We want it in, we want to find the vector equation of the line. So actually, I, I probably should have said it at this point. The final answer, we want to write it in the form or, therefore, or equals x is we're going to write it like this. It's 1 seventh. Y is 18 sevenths. And Z is 0. I don't like what I'm about to do here. So let me move. I have to move all this down. And this is in a vector like this. This is my position vector of the point on the line. And then this is plus T times and I have negative 2 sevenths t, negative 2 sevenths t, That's, there's my t, 13 sevenths, and then z is just t, so this is just 1. So this is my vector equation of the line of intersection of these two planes. And that's it, without a calculator, with a calculator. There is one other nice way to do this, an easier way to do it, if you know a point on the line. Now you could arguably find a point on this line by just if you let z equal zero, and then find x and y um, just by solving a, uh, the two, two simultaneous equations with two unknowns, you could actually find a, find a point. Um, and then, so that's the point, on the line and then the direction of the line is actually equal to and it's this is something you need to know anyway the direction of that line is equal to the cross product of the normals of the two planes now this is a little bit hard to see but imagine imagine this plane has a normal coming straight up out of the ground like this and this guy's normal is coming straight out like this imagine this in three dimensions what's happening is the let's say this is my straight line here so if you can think about it this guy's going actually let me get rid of that this guy's going straight up this guy's going straight across the line is actually perpendicular to both of these 
And again, if you if you take out a book and get two pencils and make the pencils perpendicular to the two pages, you'll see that the line goes. Um, it's perpendicular to this normal and this normal. Hence, um, the direction of the line, the direction, the direction is equal to the cross product of n1, n1 cross n2 gives me the direction of the line. So if you have a point on the line, or if you can easily find one, for example, if these, if this is zero and this is zero, you know the point. 0, 0, 0 is on the line, then you can easily get the direction of the line by getting the cross product of the two normals, and then you have the line. It's point plus t times direction. Okay, that's it. Um, hope that made sense. That's one of the more confusing lessons for sure. Um, but yeah, hope, hope you got it. And see you in the next video.